Right, so um, we're now going to be looking at, uh, this video is going to be on actually uh, surface integrals of vector fields. But before we can do that, as you remember before we did um, line integrals, we were looking at oriented curves. Um, now we're going to look at, uh, before we get to surface integrals of vector fields, we're going to look at oriented surfaces. So in, in its most basic form, an oriented surface uh, is... If you have some surface here, for instance, as here, as I have it here, there is, we need to consider the normal uh, to this. So say this is, if this is N1, the normal N1, then underneath on the other side, there is a normal minus N1. Now, normal vectors. Now, if this happens to be the case throughout uh, the surface, then each, then the surface has two sides. Of course, this indicates that it has two sides. Any surface that has two sides, okay, is considered an oriented surface. Now, now you might think, well, that's every surface. Well, I uh, I point towards the the Mobius strip, okay, the Mobius strip, uh, a, a well known surface that is um, basically uh, taking, for instance. Uh, uh, any strip of paper, and you can do this yourself. Take a strip of paper, and um, you know, twist. Uh, take a one twist, and then join the ends. So what you'll end up with is something like. So if you take this strip A B C D and join it, um, I want you to notice this twist here. Okay, this is known as the Mobius strip. This was Mobius was a German geometer. Um, uh, Anyway, so this is known as the Mobius strip. So you see this twist. This means that it has only one side because of this. So you would have um, uh, not have a continuous, um, you know, here, for instance, you'll see outwards, outwards, outwards. All the normals are outwards, okay? And here, there, this an opposite direction as you go below the other side, I mean, exactly the other side. But in the Mobius strip, that doesn't happen because what happens in the Mobius strip is if if this is these are inwards, for instance, okay, these are inwards, then these become outward. So you can see that um, there is a a strange behavior that is not um, that's not the same as uh, a strip. So this is not an oriented surface. This is oriented. This is not oriented. Okay, the other thing you need to keep in mind is um, uh, there are surfaces, for instance, the sphere, uh, an example of a sphere, and in the case of the sphere, what's happening is that you are looking at, um, where if the sphere is the, uh, the sphere is a solid which is enclosed by the spherical, the sphere, the surface of the sphere. Now this surface of the sphere, this is a closed region so there's a closed region inside that enclosed by the sphere. Now, in this case also, we have um, an important idea, which is the, if you remember, we have a similar thing in positive uh, orientation and negative orientation. Uh, sorry. So the positive, orient, the positive orientation in case of the sphere, we can set the normal vectors that point outward from the region. So outward is positive, okay? positive and inward normal vectors are the negative orientation okay so let's let's try to keep that um, in mind okay that's just a little bit extra so now we can move on to look at uh, surface integrals of vector fields so given any surface given any surface z equals uh, some function g of x y um, if we want to find the normal uh, to such a surface, it's calculated by the following. Now, this we have done something like this before. But remember, n here is the unit normal. So, unit normal, okay? That's important to understand because it's only the direction that's of interest to us, not the magnitude. And and this comes from taking the, the cross product. If you remember, we've already done this before in an earlier exercise. The other way would be um, if we use the other, uh, our unit. Um, sorry, our oriented uh, surface, which is parametrized, then 
the unit normal is this, um, in fact. Okay. Now let's uh, let's go towards the um, surface integrals of vector fields. So what we're talking about here is this, uh, in fact. This is a surface integral of a vector field, notation-wise. These are the symbols that represent where we want to calculate the surface integral of f, where f is a vector field. This is also referred to um, as the flux of the vector field, or the flux of f. Effectively, to calculate this, of course, this we introduce a couple of things. First, we show that this is this is the same as f dot n ds, because remember, integrals here need to be brought back down to a scalar function so that we can integrate them in that way, and therefore get a surface area, or a volume, or a surface integral. These are all numerical values in the end. They are not vectors. They are all scalar quantities in the end. So, now, that's this, but of course that doesn't allow us to calculate uh, this particular um, integral. So we go further, in fact, and say that, well, we already know that what n is, we've just shown what n is, in fact. So if we replace that, um, and then we end up with, of course, saying that uh, just replace n with what I just showed you there before, just earlier, ru cross rv over the norm of ru cross rv. Okay, and the ds goes here then. Now, in, now if um, we just rearrange this a little bit, um, we can get the following. Um, we can make this into an integral. So if you just recall for a moment that if you remember this part here, we've already done this before in previous video, where we're calculating surface integrals of fx, y, z, ds. To effectively calculate it, we parameterize it and multiply it by the norm of ru cross rv dA. You might remember that from the previous video. Now, if we do the same here, in this case, this is our dss. So this is our fx, y is essentially all of this. So that I've written it here now. This is after parameterization. So that's the parameterization. And if I parameterize, I must multiply by this absolute value of ru cross rv dA. So the integral then becomes this double integral that we are familiar with and can easily solve. And this is now fully parameterized. Everything is in terms of u and v. So we simply need to know the range of values of u and v to finish this. Now this can be further simplified, of course, this can be further simplified, um, and we end up with a region D integral, end up with this. So we have a double integral f dot ru cross rv dA, where this is, of course, as I've got here, it's parametrized. So this is a vector field after parametrization. Let's look at an example. So here's an example. Uh, for the vector field f equals y, z, y, x, find the flux across the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 9. So parametrization would be our first uh, target here. So the parametrization in phi theta, as we've shown you before, we've done this before already, will be, so this is uh, going to be the parametrization, r phi theta, and uh, theta phi between zero and pi, and theta between zero and two pi as before, because it's a full sphere with radius uh, radius three. So you'll note the, the three multiplier here, okay? That's replacing rho uh, if you're comparing this to the spherical polar coordinates. Right, so now, um, let's move on and calculate r phi cross r theta. Okay, and that will work out to be, that's going to be our cross product, 9 sine squared phi cos theta, 9 sine squared phi sine theta, and 9 sine phi cos phi. Now we can calculate the norm of that. So that will boil down to just 9 sine phi. So that will be our um, uh, norm of r theta r phi cross r theta. So now if you see here uh, what pieces we have here, we've got uh, the rq, r, uh, ru cross rv, okay, or we can go here, either way. We don't need actually this particular one, this particular calculation. Uh, so now what we need to do is we need to convert the uh, vector field f in terms of uh, the parametrization. So that will become I remember z is 3 cos phi, so that'll be 3 cos phi, and then we'll have um, uh, y, as y is 3 sine phi sine, uh, sine phi sine theta, okay, and x, 
So that's 3 sine phi cos theta. Now we've got that, and we have to take the dot product of that uh, with our u cross rv. So our integral will become, and it'll be over, of course, uh, we'll do um, theta. So we'll do theta uh, first, uh, second, I mean. So 2 pi, 0 to pi, and it'll be the dot product. It'll be the dot product of these two. So you can just see those there. So that'll become, in fact, that's, that's the dot product. It will be that. Now you'll see that these two are the same, so they'll add into each other and become 54. And uh, as we proceed to integrate, this will become, that's just the 54 the combined. And now you see, because these are both numerical limits, uh, we can actually calculate the two integrals for theta and phi simultaneously. I'll show you how. Split the integral as here I've shown you. Uh, so you see the theta integral separately, and here's the phi integral, theta integral, and the phi integral. And proceed, they're all simple integrals to solve, and we end up with, when this will finish easily, and we get at the end, after everything is sorted out, the answer will be 4 pi over 3. That's it. Okay, so in, here's a, a, sometimes a, a nice little shortcut that you can use for such surfaces as z equals g of x, y. It doesn't work for the sphere, it's much more difficult. But for instance, a paraboloid like z equals 1 minus x squared minus y squared, for instance, um, the, the, the surface integral can be written as, in fact, simplified to this, where f, of course, we're assuming here, is p, q, and r. And there's no parameterization here, as you can directly see. It's directly in um, the parameters are x and y, in fact. We're thinking of them as, as x and y. So you can actually do it this way. We'll look at a quick example of this. Uh, we have the vector field f, y, x, z, and s is the boundary of the region e enclosed by z equals 1 minus x squared minus uh, y squared. So that's like uh, some jello on a... Um, uh, on a plate, that's what it approximately looks like. As we have kind of this, it's not, it, this is more like a paraboloid, not a, uh, not a sphere, sorry. Anyway, so um, essentially here you have the same situation that I mentioned. So here we are, so of course here P is Y, Q is X, and, uh, sorry, and uh, Z, I'm sorry, and R, is z and of course uh, g in this case would be 1 minus x squared minus y squared so therefore um, this will become uh, the <clears throat> as you can see uh, minus p so minus p means minus y okay so let's sorry minus y so that's going to be minus y and minus y is going to be multiplying as you can see this is what i'm using here minus p and then gx this is g, so the x derivative, that will mean minus 2x, and then minus q, q and gy, so q is, uh, q is x, okay, so gy will be minus 2y, okay, and the final piece is just r, which means the, uh, which means uh, z, in fact, and z as you know, is uh, 1 minus x squared minus y squared, 1 minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, so that dA. So that will boil down to... Now one thing I do want you to note here is that it's important for you to understand that there are two surfaces we have broken this up into. We have S1, which is this uh, paraboloid on the top, and S2, which is this um, circle, uh, disk, uh, at the bottom. So the orientation, of course, is outward orient. This is our positive orientation, and this one has this orientation, okay? So this here, um, so the, the normal would be positive for this one. The normal, though, uh, would be uh, for this. This is for S1. So here, let me just indicate that. So this is S1 we're doing right now, okay? Now, in that case, in that case, what will happen is, so that is uh, bet uh, between the, uh, the zero, zero, zero plane to one minus x squared minus y squared. So essentially we're talking about the circle, uh, 
z is going to go from 0 to um, the circle x squared plus y squared equals 1, which means we can use polar coordinates here. So we will have 0 to 2 pi, and the radius will be 0 to 1. And then we have to change these, of course, to 1 plus uh, 4. Okay, it will be 1 plus 4 r squared uh, cos theta sine theta. Okay, minus r squared, and of course now we'll have r dr d theta. So if we work that out, that'll, it's quite a straightforward interval anyway, but it'll work out to be pi over 2. Now the important, one important thing you need to see is the S2 surface. We need to look at what is happening at S2, the disk. Now that's oriented downwards. So S2, S2 is oriented as I showed you in the diagram, as you can see, downwards. Okay, so it's the opposite direction. So that means here, um, in this case, the unit normal n would be minus k. Okay, and we have, therefore, s2, it will be f dot ds again, but it will simply be over the surface s2, f dot uh, dot product with minus k, okay, ds, or if you like, uh, this is the same as 0, 0, minus 1, okay, and um, actually, I'd like to stick to this notation, uh, let me just change that back, so that'll be 0, 0, minus 1, um, ds, and that'll only leave us with because we already know what f is, so it'll just leave us, when we take the dot product, it'll just give us minus z dA, okay? And of course, at the disk, at the disk, um, let me show you in the question, if I can just pull the question down again, there, yeah. So you can see in the question that we were told it's between z equals 0 and z equals this one, the, um, the paraboloid. So that means at that point, z is 0. So that's just equal to, that's not, um, that's just equal to double integral 0 dA, which is 0. So S2 turns out to be 0. So therefore, the overall integral is just pi over 2. So S is, you know, whatever, S1 plus S2, and that equals pi over 2. Okay, we'll stop.